This is a pretty big one. So this one's from Joseph. Um, he says, how might David respond to those who accuse him of stubbornly interpreting the Quran as a Wahhabist um, would instead of allowing for other interpretations? Some have made a point that what biblical scholars do with uh, morally troubling passages in the Old Testament are, for some reason, uncharitably disallowed by David in interpreting the Quran. Um, this question frequently comes combined with references to scholars who do not interpret the Quran as David does. Mm -hmm. um, well, um, so, so j just to clarify the objection, uh, David, if you read Surah 9, verse 29 of the Quran, fight those who do not believe in Allah. You say, what does it mean? Ah, it means fight those who do not believe in Allah. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't allow someone to say, well, what it really means is this completely different thing. But if you read uh, a command about Joshua being commanded to go fight the Canaanites and so on, and you say, oh, well, you know, that's for a different time or something like this. And so you want to contextualize, why don't you let Muslims do that? Well, right. uh, <laughs> just, just read the books, right? Read the book. And if you read the Bible from beginning to end, you start at Genesis, and you read all the way through to Revelation, and you say, what am I supposed to do according to this book? It would never cross your mind. I'm supposed to cross the, the Jordan and go fight the Canaanites. Why? Well, that was a command to Joshua. In other words, it's the text itself that puts that in a certain context. Um, and that, those commands are associated with a particular covenant that's associated with a particular piece of land, right? right. There is a series of covenants in the Bible, right, that are they're directed, that are different people are involved in the covenants, right? There's, right. A, there's a covenant with Noah. Um, there's right. a covenant with, with the children of Israel. Right. And those commands are directed towards the children of Israel. It's, yeah. it's that covenant. Um, and then you have the final covenant with Jesus Christ. And if you sit there and, and, and think, as a person who has entered into this covenant, what are the commands that are directed towards me? Well, that command to go fight the Canaanites ain't it. Right, right, right. The right. commands that are directed towards me are, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength. Notice, that's both covenants, right? Right. That's affirmed as both covenants, yep. right? Um, love your neighbor as yourself. That's affirmed in both covenants. Yep. Um, love your enemies, right? Mm -hmm. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. That's a command that's directed towards me. Right. Um, so the commands that we have that are part of my covenant, uh, that I'm under, my covenant, my covenant with God that right. I've entered into, <coughs> those, co those covenants don't, this covenant doesn't involve any uh, sort of fighting or killing, right? Right, right. So I can say, now, now this, is, this is the appropriate question for, for a Christian that takes that into account. You, Christian, have been commanded to love everyone, uh, to do good to everyone, to live in peace with, with all men right. to the best of your ability. Right. That's what you've been commanded. Nevertheless, you believe in a God who, at one point, commanded these other things. What do you think about that? You're right, right. So as a Christian, that is an important question that you might ask a Christian, right? right. That's, a, that's an important question to ask. How do you right. reconcile that? But notice, that has nothing to do with you going out and killing, right? right it has right. nothing to do with you being a danger, you being a threat, you wanting to hurt, or your... your revelation commanding you to do that right right nothing to do with that right it, it's it's obvious from the scripture you're not being commanded to do that right? right right so it's a question of how do you reconcile your covenant with this earlier covenant when it's the same god right but notice that's it's sort of a theological discussion right and the, the question is what do these passages mean mm -hmm. um if you're talking about the quran the Quran is the final covenant, according to Islam, right? That, okay. that, that, is, the fi that is the final agreement, right? right. So if I'm looking, and in, in, within right. the Quran, you have the, the principle of abrogation, right. that later commands can abrogate or cancel earlier commands, right? And so the question is, once you go to the, the final commands of the final revelation, what do they say? Well, they say things like, fight those who do not believe in Allah. Right. Um, those who are with Muhammad are severe against disbelievers, merciful among themselves. That's what you have in the final revelations of the final revelation, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. So if you sit there and read the Quran from beginning to end, what is this commanding me to do? What right. it's commanding you to do is fight unbelievers, right, to right. violently subjugate unbelievers. That's what it's commanding you to do. And you say, oh, well, that's the interpretation of a Wahhabi. It's because Wahhabis aren't inclined to reinterpret the things, right? They're not, right. oh, you know, I live in the United States, I don't want to believe this, so let me right. let me reinterpret this. Right. The, 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 the method of the Wahhabis is you go back to the first few generations. This is Salafi interpretation. You go back to the first few generations of, of interpretations of the Muslim community, and it, you can't come up with any new interpretation, new way of doing things yeah. after that. Right. Because Muhammad said the best generations of Muslims were the first three generations. Right, right, right. So uh, also, the nature of the revelations is different. In the Bible, human authors are inspired by the Spirit to right. write. But it's still Luke sitting down to write, right? So Luke gets Luke is in a certain historical situation. Um, Luke uh, 
uh, is using his own way of putting things. He's moved, he's inspired to write um, his portion of the Word of God, of the inspired Word of God. Yeah. But it makes sense that he's going to be using literary devices and so on that are understood at his... That, that all makes sense oh, in yeah, a Christian context, right? Yeah. They're, they're, humans are involved in the process, yeah. right? In other, I'm only talking about interpreting here. So yeah. it makes sense to say... What did this question mean in that context? What yeah. because Luke, you know, Paul's writing. Paul's writing. Churches are asking him questions, right. and Paul's writing. So it makes sense to say, what's the issue that Paul's responding to? This is the meaning of the text. That right. makes sense to talk about. Right. The Quran is not like that. This is right. not something that um, Muhammad is inspired to write, but Muhammad's writing according to the literary, you know, devices of right. his time and so on. He's responding to certain problems. This is Allah's eternal word. Right. That Allah is the author. This isn't written by humans. It makes no sense to say that, that, that Allah is just using some sort of literary device right here yeah. that was common in this, in this area. It's his eternal word for all time. And, and, and you, know, you see what I'm saying? Yep, so that makes sense. In that eternal word, Allah says that his revelation is perfectly clear over and over and over again like a beating drum. You're right. And so if Allah yeah. says, fight those who do not believe, and you yeah. say what he really means is fight people who are attacking you, right? right That's right. the reinterpretation. That's right, what right. he means. Right. That's what he means. Well, if he says he means exactly what he says and it's perfectly yeah. clear and right. you say, yeah. and you say, well, what he really meant is, yeah. you're already saying you can say it more clearly than the perfectly clear Allah said it from all eternity. Right, right. right? And, yeah. and, and the, the idea that Muslims can just do this off the top of their heads, right. just off the top of my head, what he really meant was, I've right. never even read it, this is what Muslims do to me all the time. Right, 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 right. What he really meant was only fight people who are attacking you. Right, right. Okay, well, you off the top of your head said what Allah really meant. If he really meant that, wouldn't it have been better to say it like that? Yeah, right. Did he lack the words in Arabic to say what you just said? Right, right. And he, no, that makes no sense, right? Right, right. You don't get to reinsert, and that's what the Salafis understand, right? right they right. understand you can't just come along and say that you're saying it better than Allah said it. Right, right. You, you, if you're going to say you're interpreting this in a certain way, you better have a very good reason that is affirmed by the early Muslim community right. as a reason for interpreting this the way you interpret it. Yeah. Otherwise, you have no basis for interpreting So you have different kinds of revelations to say of the final revelations of the final revelation. Right. In other words, the final chapters, right, right. the final revelations are revealed in the final revelation of the Quran. Yeah. What Allah really meant was, that's completely different from saying, hey, as a Christian, I'm not, command, I'm not the one who's commanded to cross the Jordan. Right, right, right. right. So I, I think it's perfectly consistent to say, I'm reading the Quran in this way, and I'm reading the Bible in this way. Why? Because this is what the Bible says, right, right. and that's what the Quran says. Right, right. And the Quran says how to interpret it. Right, right. I'm interpreting the Quran the way Allah commands me to interpret the Quran. Right, right, right. And so are Salafis. That, right, that's right. how they're interpreting the Quran the way Allah commands them. Can another person come along and say, I'm going to interpret it in a different way? Right. Yes, but you're on very shaky ground. Right, and right. that's why you don't see these Western academics having many debates with Salafis. Yeah, right. Because they would get crushed by Salafis when it comes right. to methodology. It's just a, all right, good.